so good afternoon everyone so for the next 15 to 20 minutes or so you'll hear me talk about the mechanism of uh, drug action the topic of my presentation is me the mechanism of drug action the biological responses in the wake of drug administration and secondary messenger systems that amplify the biological response okay so let's start with understanding the contents so what are the contents and what am i going to cover i'm going to cover the drug action the receptors some information about receptors biological response and secondary messenger systems so overall my topic is uh, not that descriptive so we'll cover in that sense okay so first we'll start with understanding the keywords so that the things that we'll talk about later would be understood by every one of us so this presentation is in regards to the field of pharmacology right so pharmacology is the study of drug chemistry and its physiological and the drug's physiological effects on the body of the organism okay then come to pharmacokinetics so pharmacokinetics if we define that in a single line it means what in lay terms obviously what the drug does sorry what the body does to the drug that means so kinetics if we understand kinetics kinetics essentially means movements or movement so so pharmacokinetics refers to the movement of a drug of any drug going into through and out of the body once it has been metabolized then pharmacodynamics so pharmacodynamics focuses on what the drug does to the body like what is the effect of the drug on the body and what the uh, uh, biological response is there after activation okay so it focuses on the receptor minding the post receptor effects and the chemical interactions within the molecules inside the cell itself because obviously it will be affecting the cells then receptors so the molecules that welcome the ligand are the receptor so ligand can be anything hormone or any neurotransmitter or any chemical of that sort which has affinity towards the receptor then comes agonist so if we understand that agonist initiates cellular response so an agonist is like the hero of a story hero of a story essentially so they are chemicals that interact with the receptor and thereby initiate a cellular reaction so they start a feedback loop which uh, simply amplifies the synthesis machineries inside the cell so it upregulates all the expressions and antagonist is the villain so if there is a hero a villain has to exist right so antagonists are the molecules that neutralize the effect of agonist so it is totally opposite to that next is the receptors so if a drug has to show its therapeutic action it has to bind somewhere right so the receptor is the binding site of the drug so receptors can be extracellular such as gpcr uh, g protein coupled receptor or one pass enzyme linked receptors and intracellular receptors such as nuclear receptors as well so most drugs combine with a molecular structure on a surface or within the cell to initiate an effect on a cell so this molecular structure on the cell surface majorly is the receptor so drugs plus receptor bring about a molecular change okay so the molecular changes we'll talk about that in the later part of the presentation so drugs that mimic sorry drugs mimic the effects of hormones or neurotransmitters and also show similar affinity so that means the hormones and neurotransmitters which are released from our body which are synthesized inside our body by the cells they are also mimicked or the same effect is shown by the drugs that can be synthesized in a lab or on industrial scale okay so specific receptive substances serve as triggers of cellular reactions and receptors have limited specificity and will interact with only limited structurally related or complementary compounds so not every molecule can bind to a specific receptor the receptor is uh, specific to a, a particular molecule which is structurally or uh, conformationally similar to that uh, receptor okay so the combination of the drug and receptor results in a molecular change in the receptor such as an altered configuration or charge distribution of the uh, receptor and thereby triggers a chain of events leading to a response so many drugs as we uh, discussed here as i said that mimic the effects of hormones and neurotransmitters okay so all receptors with which drugs 
combine are receptors for neurotransmitters, first neurotransmitters, then hormones and other physiological substances, which are obviously roaming around the uh, receptors. So thus the discovery of a specific receptor for a group of drugs can lead to some, en some unknown endogenous substances that combine with the same receptor. So if we look at this uh, diagram here, so this is an example of a membrane, sorry, uh, we have a membrane and this is an example of a membrane receptor on the cell surface. Okay, so the so these parts which are there in the uh, backside are the, uh, so is the membrane, it is the membrane, phospholipid membrane and the, the thing labeled as one here are the ligands located outside the cell, ligands or the hormones or neurotransmitters, anything that binds to a receptor is called a ligand. So ligands, the uh, triangle and circular uh, red marks. Then the thing labeled as second is two is the ligands that connect to specific receptor proteins. So receptor proteins are uh, highlighted in purple here. So they interact on the basis of the shape of the active site of the protein. So here you can see the first receptor here has a triangular uh, active site or the binding site and only triangular ligands can bind. So this is an example, just an example. Receptors are not triangular or something like that. Uh, they are very complex. And this, the other receptor is, it has affinity for circular uh, ligands or hormones, okay? Then third is the receptor that releases a messenger once the ligand has bound or connected to the receptor okay so here uh, you, you can see once the triangular uh, hormone or ligand has bound to the uh, receptor the secondary messenger has been released from the receptor and it will activate some other you know, or it will start some other processes in the cell and here it is still attached because the ligand has not been attached extracellularly okay so next we'll just take an, as I said, the examples of uh, receptors are GPCRs, enzyme linked and nuclear receptors inside the nucleus, which have affin uh, affinity towards the lipid based uh, uh, ligands or molecules. Okay. So next we'll see an example or uh, let's take an example to understand the drug re re receptor interaction and the biological response. So here in the graphic, we have a scene set around the membrane of a muscle cell. Okay. The high, sorry, the end plate region, which is this region, this region, the synapse region of a skeletal muscle fiber contains large number of receptors having affinity towards the uh, neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So here we are uh, talking about acetylcholine. So acetylcholine is an example of a neurotransmitter which is released from the neuron. And here in the graphic, you can see it is said neural membrane is this side. So here from here, the neurotransmitter will be released into the synapse. And this is the membrane of the muscle, which has the receptors. So here we have the, uh, uh, the receptors for the uh, acetylcholine. So these are ion channel linked receptors. Okay. So once acetylcholine releases, sorry, uh, binds some ions are released inside the cell. So we'll talk about this in detail now. Okay, so acetylcholine has two types of receptors. So one is uh, nicotinic and the other is muscarinic. So here we'll talk about uh, nicotinic receptors, which are the ion channel link receptors and the muscarinic re receptors are GPCR based. Okay, so at rest, the post synaptic membrane, which is this, this membrane, the uh, end plate or post synaptic membrane of muscle is relatively impermeable to sodium. So this is the sodium ion okay so it is impermeable to sodium at rest that means when the uh, cell potential is minus 70 millivolts so when the uh, stimulation of nerve happens from this side the neural membrane so when the nerve or the neuron is stimulated the muscle yeah, the nerve uh, releases the neurotransmitter so there's an action potential that happens and the Nerve leading to the muscle results in the release of a neurotransmitter, which is acetylcholine from the nerve fiber into the region of end plate here. So the acetylcholine combines with the receptor and causes a conformational change on the receptor. So there will be a conformational change or the shape change so that the channels are opened and sodium flows inward. So here you can see only one acetylcholine molecule has been attached here. So more acetylcholine molecule. So if the end plate region or the receptor have more 
uh, acid alkaline molecules then more of the sodium will flow inside so that the receptors will be activated here in this case so we can see if more receptors are activated then more sodium will flow inside and the there will be a local depolarization we saw the uh, acetylcholine receptor was bound with acetylcholine then na plus or the sodium ion influx happened and there was a local depolarization so what do we mean by local, local depolarization is that depolarization means there is the uh, normal voltage was bridged that means the voltage increased so earlier it was minus 70 millivolts it moved upwards due to the influx of sodium ions so positive ions will increase the potential right so minus 70 tha, so it increased to minus 40 so what happened after that is that so when i added more uh, acetylcholine here a local depolarization occurred and the threshold potential of minus 40 was breached and next thing is that the voltage gated sodium channels opened and again the voltage gated calcium channels also opened okay voltage gated calcium channels open and there are also some calcium ions inside the cell that were released from the vesicles so the endoplasmic reticulum inside a cell houses the calcium ions okay so once the voltage uh, was breached and a lot of sodium were inside the vesicles released the calcium and the calcium ions interacted with the uh, contractile proteins which is namely actin and myosin to contract the muscle so obviously if we all know that muscle has the job to contract and relax which is why we move so once calcium was bound to the or was associated with the actin and myosin the muscle contracted okay shortened in length so acetylcholine so this was just one example of uh, acetylcholine inducing such responses so we have drugs that act as acetylcholine so the drugs that we know of that act as acetyl or the similar responses at acetylcholine are nicotine and carbamylcholine so these are agonists that bind or induce similar physiological responses even though the molecule is different it is the same uh, it is binding to the same receptors inducing the biological response the same biological response inside the cell and if we talk about the villains or the uh, antagonist of acetylcholine or of uh, nicotine and carbamylcholine it is d tubocurin so d tubocurin doesn't allow the antagonist to bind so uh, it inhibits the action of uh, the agonist okay so something we we'll learn this as competitive inhibition in the coming uh, presentations by saida and shruti so in competitive inhibition an inhibitory molecule occupies the active site of the receptor that doesn't allow the agonist to do its job okay so d tubocurin is doing the same thing okay so next we'll talk about uh, just the agonist and antagonist so the foreign chemicals can be designed to interact with the receptors meant for endogenous molecules so these uh, foreign molecules can be agonist or antagonist because we need both in equimolar fashion okay so in uh, equimolar means in the same concentration around the cell so agonist and antagonist are mimicry artists if we uh, want to remember in a funny way these are mimicry artists and agonists are the keys carrying the right message so it will stimulate the uh, cellular activity here, here you can see the uh, pentagonic drug has bound to the receptor and it is enhancing the cellular activity but if an ego, uh, antagonist is binding it is inhibiting the activity so it is showing competitive inhibition it is binding to the active site of the agonist and it is inhibiting the agonist there so it is blocking the cellular activity so at, uh, as we discussed in the previous slide acetylcholine agonist are nicotine and carbamylcholine next if you move on to antagonist antagonists are the keys carrying the wrong message okay so these are the keywords that we should remember uh, very easily it will be there in our mind okay so d tubocurin as we discussed in the previous slide is an antagonist of acetylcholine and it's agonist so next we'll talk about the secondary messengers okay so secondary messengers are molecules inside the cell that help in signal transaction so what is signal transaction signal transaction is the uh, amplification of a biological signal that is their biochemical signal inside the cell 
so these are molecules that mediate signal transduction or amplification of signal after it has or amplify the signal after it has been received by the receptor so uh, majorly we have a lot of like we have a lot of uh, uh, types of gpcr so the types of secondary messengers that we have is that the gpcr and the enzyme linked receptor so gpcr has three types gs gi and gq and uh, for enzyme linked receptors so it is for the protein or polypeptide based ligand molecules okay if we talk about the gpcr world then it has majorly three types so gs means g stimulatory g inhibitory and g quescent so gs or g stimulatory it stimulates so once the uh, drug has bound to the gpcr then that gpcr intracellular domain will simulate to gs so gs is a protein so gs is associated with gdp okay so once it is converted so when gdp is converted to gtp then gs will start stimulating adenylyl cyclase so adenylyl cyclase is the next molecule so it is an enzyme that cleaves our energy rich molecule which is atp into camp cyclic adenosine monophosphate okay so what is the job of camp so the uh, job of camp is to activate a lot of kinases okay so there are a lot of kinases that are really really active inside the cell because uh, they have the job to activate or inactivate some very important enzymes like all enzymes are activated by uh, kinases and phosphatases so kinases are molecules that add one phosphate group and phosphatases are molecules that remove the phosphate group added by kinase okay so once kinases are activated they initiate a cascade of regulatory activities so the regulatory activities we'll see in the upcoming slides okay so we saw that gs stimulates adenylyl cyclase which is the main molecule and the main secondary messenger here is the camp highlighted in yellow but if a uh, inhibitory so if an inhibitory neurotransmitter such as uh, uh, let's say nitric oxide or dopamine binds then gi pathway will be stimulated so it will bind to the uh, cell surface receptor and then gpcr will be activated then gpcr will activate gi protein which is again associated with gdp when gdp is converted to gtp then gi will inhibit the adenylyl cyclase so that means gs will be stimulate so gs was stimulating adenylyl cyclase ac but gi is inhibiting adenylyl cyclase so if adenylyl cyclase is getting inhibited then atp won't be converted to camp so if atp is not getting converted to camp then all these cascade of regulatory activities won't be activated so that means this kinases will not be activated okay so this is the major thing about the secondary messengers and g q g quescent is some other thing we'll talk uh, we'll not talk about that in this presentation because it's not there in the uh, syllabus okay so if we want uh, i can explain but in the later part during the question answer session next we have the drug receptor interaction so what all uh, interactions happen sorry what all processes takes place once the secondary messengers are activated so majorly four things takes place majorly so the first is activation or inactivation of enzymes so enzymes which are involved in regulating cellular metabolism synthesis or breakdown of some molecules activation of some transcription factors and stuff like that okay so how are enzymes activated they are activated either by phosphatases or by kinases okay the kinases that we discussed in the previous slide the next job is contraction and relaxation so uh as we saw in the uh, previous ka previous slide uh, where acetylcholine was acting to the muscle cell and it the muscle cell in turn contracted right <clears throat> so it also helps the secondary uh, messengers also help in rearrangement of the cytoskeleton or microtubules in order to change the cellular plasticity that means if a cell earlier was a round shaped then it will be some other shape to uh, to accommodate a lot of cells so it will change the shape of the cell okay then we have the closing and th the third phenomena is the closing and opening of channels so channels such as the ion channels or ligand gated channels 
okay so the, these are associated with that ion channels and transporters so we know that uh, sodium potassium atpases are there so these are all activated by the kinases and the other molecules which are associated with secondary messengers then we have the activation of transcription factors so transcription factors are important enzymes which act in the nucleus inside the nucleus that mediate the up and down regulation of genes inside the nucleus because gene synthesis sorry uh, protein synthesis is a very protein synthesis is a very uh, important phenomena that occurs inside a cell so activation of transcription factors is very very important for which the uh, uh, secondary messengers need to be stimulated okay so these were four major uh, uh, what do we say jobs of the molecules activated by secondary messengers so the <clears throat> last slide is of the nature of the response so the uh, presence or absence of the appropriate receptor decides the efficacy or how effective is that uh, ligand molecule or the drug molecule okay so the effect sorry the presence or absence of the appropriate receptor decides the efficacy of an agonist so there are some questions that we must ask so which g protein couples with the receptor so th these are the questions related to the secondary messengers so which g protein couples with the receptor as we saw there are three types g s g i and g q so which uh, g protein couples with the receptor and uh, and it is of different types right so we have different specificities so it will depend on that which kinase is activated so there are a lot of kinases like j a k j a k kinases and protein kinases tyrosine kinases so uh, it depends on which type of drug is binding to the receptor and then the last question is which proteins are accessible for the kinase to phosphorylate again so all, the, all these questions are interrelated and it uh, first of all it depends on the uh, like how the receptor is getting stimulated and which drug is binding is it uh, excitatory or inhibitory so is it causing up regulation or down regulation so it depends on that the receptors for epinephrine or adrenaline or norepinephrine or noradrenaline 5 hydroxytryptamine or serotonin are all gpcr or uh, g protein coupled receptors so these are epinephrine norepinephrine and 5ht 5 hydroxytryptamine or serotonin are very important neurotransmitters which are released from the neurons and the receptors for all these are gpcrs so gpcrs as big uh, gpcrs are basically glyco glyco glycoprotein sorry glycoprotein based and they span the cell membrane seven times so like this they span the membrane seven times and obviously as we have been seeing the they facilitate the signal transduction so the uh, references that i referred from me uh, for making the presentation was majorly the book modern pharmacology with clinical applications by stitzel and craig sixth edition so coming up next we'll see uh, the topics such as the chemistry of drug receptor binding dynamics of drug receptor binding dose response relationship potency and intrinsic activity and drug antagonism which will be explained by saida and shruti in the coming uh, lectures